In the heart of the Red River Gorge, where nature thrives and time slows down, there exists a hidden sanctuary. Deep in the woods, where tranquility reigns and the whispers of the wind echo through the trees, there lies Turtle Farm Pottery. Here, a master craftsman finds solace and inspiration. As Casey walks the path less traveled, he enters a realm where creativity intertwines with the essence of nature. But beyond the mere creation of beautiful pottery lies a deeper significance. For this place, nestled far away from the hustle of the modern world, holds the key to his mental well-being. The rhythm of the forest, the symphony of songbirds, and the gentle whispers of the flowing creek become the backdrop to his inner peace. In this tranquil haven, he finds a sanctuary that allows his mind to wander, to heal, and to connect the very essence of his being. Surrounded by nature's majesty, he nurtures his soul, finding solace in the silence, and in turn, shaping the clay that holds his deepest emotions. Through each masterpiece birthed from clay and fire, his journey becomes an ode to the transformative power of art. The serenity found within and the underlying bond with the untamed world that surrounds him. This is the story of Turtle Farm Pottery, a testament of the enduring spirit of creativity and the healing power of the wilderness. This is so awesome, man. You got a little greenhouse and everything. Yeah, this is, I can't believe this thing's still standing, but this is where we like start all the babies in here. Got a little kale crop in here going. But this is mostly just like a get them get them ready to go in the garden spot. those are beautiful greens yeah you can tell you all put some love and care into those oh yeah we're going to the garden is that butter butter greens butter these are lettuce? just yeah lettuce like a mix i think um laura came in and said there's three chickens in the garden last night i don't know if it, how they're getting in here dang chickens yeah man they're probably eating all the strawberries <laughs> Man, look at our little radishes are coming up. That's good. We're a little late I on love this. radishes. Ooh, me too. Do you pickle them or do you eat them just like raw on salad or something? Yeah, we just kind of, yeah, raw. Raw mostly, yeah. I mean, you all put so much work into this back here. I mean, Man. everything is like perfect. It's just getting going. I love arugula. Yeah, dude. Gosh, get, I love Get you one of those. Yeah, let me. Come on. We're just going to take some arugula right from the garden here. No big deal. Spicy. Mm, look at that. Mm. Arugula is so good. It's so good. Mm. I'm just gonna like. I'm just gonna you gotta get in there. there. I'm just gonna get there. You go. <laughs> I'm just gonna eat his whole garden. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you some mint. What do you got? Yeah. Oh, you got mint. I like to chew it like tobacco. Get it in your lip. You just throw in a lip? I do. Yeah. And then you can swallow. Makes it. you feel cool? It makes me feel cool. And it kind of burns a little bit. <laughs> you like the you just he loves to burn. Yeah. Burn, baby. <laughs> that was really good. That's an herbal chaw right there. Mm. Mm -hmm. What kind of mint is that? I think it's winter. I don't know what it is. Dude, I started growing chocolate mint a couple of years right. ago. Is it good? It's really good, but it it's perennial. And it mm -hmm. just is taken over. Like this stuff, yeah. Yeah. You gotta get a close up of this, Jeremy. Maybe, maybe should one we of your it? viewers can tell. No, I don't think we should eat that. Should we eat it? No. <laughs> <laughs> this catnip. Hmm. It's not really fragrant either. You can, this is good for the chaw too, if you're oh, okay. lemon bomb. Oh, dude, I've yeah. got lemon. Lemon balm's kind of similar. It just kind of takes over if you don't control it. Yeah, like this, yeah. yeah. I don't, you can't smell this through the camera. Oh but this gosh. smells just like, exactly like lemon. It's so citrusy. You're just gonna throw it a little lip. Yeah. Make a little lip. That's good for tea. It's good for tea. Mm -hmm. I actually put it in my biscuits. It's good in biscuits. Makes it a little more fragrant. You said biscuits? Biscuits, you ever tried it? No, you put like lemon rosemary balm? and lemon balm. Oh, dude, that's a cool idea. Yeah, it gives you another thing to work on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. all do a bunch of onions. We grow our onions for the whole year because they keep pretty good. Yeah, 
So these are the red ones, and then those are like white, white onions. What's the uh, the secret to growing onions, man? Because I've tried it the last couple of years and just have failed miserably at it. Um, like I don't get very big bulbs, you know? Yeah. It's, I don't know. I, we use a broad fork. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't dock. My chaw got too big. Uh, we use a broad fork, which is a tool that like uh, kind of like aerates the soil. It doesn't till it, but it's a two-handed tool and you get on it and you kind of work it down in and like kind of stir up the soil. So we get this like soil that, I don't know, it's kind of like nice and loose usually. And I think, I think it helps the uh, roots grow down and get more nutrients and stuff. That makes sense. Um, think we could eat one? One of these onions? Yeah. You want to eat an onion? Yeah, I want to eat an onion. Oh. Can we eat an onion? Wow. Yeah, sure. I'm just gonna, just gonna eat an onion. Like, how about this one? Look at that. There's a little dirt on it, but a little dirt never hurt, did it, Casey? It doesn't hurt. You just gotta dust it off a little bit. Wow. A little red onion here. This is a little baby. That's a little baby. I'm sure it's got a lot of flavor. I, 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 I can't believe it. This is really cool. <laughs> so, so cool. Why don't you... <laughs> I should have brought a bottle of hot sauce. I've got no idea why like these are kind of small and then all of a sudden these are like massive. Like why are those so happy? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're like, you think they're pulling some nutrients from like these plants over here or something? I don't know. I doubt and like it. these are a good companion plant, you know? Maybe it's a companion that's a thing. thing. That's a thing, you know? I'll have to look that up. Yeah. yeah. So like when you do tomatoes, mm -hmm. you plant basil around your mm -hmm. tomatoes. They're companions. Laura you know? always does that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, dude. Have you ever eaten raw asparagus out of the garden? Actually, no. But that's I'm... amazing. They're perennial too, right? Yeah. Yeah, so these crowns grow up every year. Look at how long that is. All right. I've never seen that in my this life. This is what it looks like if you let it go. So, so how come when they harvest them, you only get about like that much, you know, the, in the store? It, they get a little woody, the stem. Oh. Yeah. All right, here we go, raw asparagus. My pee is gonna smell great later. It's gonna be great. Yeah. What do you think? Oh my God. It's really good. Dude. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. This is great. <laughs> love I'm not even going to have to go to Miguel's and eat lunch now. Can Jeremy, make... you like asparagus? Love it. Here you go for the for the people. Mm. I'll feed you. I just fed Jeremy. Yeah. Put it on a scale one to ten. I mean, it'd have to be a ten. Okay. I've yeah. never had raw asparagus. That's before. a ten in my book, and when uh, mm. on the asparagus scale. Mm -hmm. That's this a fun little like, area. That's where they sleep. Yeah. And that part in the middle, is it, does that actually hook up to water somewhere or? That little red thing there? Uh-huh. Yeah, so that hose goes over to the water here. And- um, That is genius. That's like an automatic thing, yeah. So we don't have to fill it up ever. So the water just always stays on and it just shoots out when it needs it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, as it goes down, it'll, there's like a little check valve in there or something that releases, fills the cup back up. That is so smart. <laughs> it's great. You this is a Hulk hand. Yeah, there's a Hulk hand. Gosh, look at this thing. It's actually, it kind of makes you feel like you're Iron Man or something. Wow. That's pretty cool. Thanos. <laughs> Thanos. I can't, I can't remember Thanos' voice or I'd try it. This is kind of an odd feature of the garden. It's a shower. Oh. This is, a, this is my garden shower. I like to uh, come out Let's here. Let's turn it on. Yeah. You know, because you get sweaty while you're working in the garden and you can come over here and just take a little shower. That is so awesome. I mean, it's for like... You got hot water and cold water there? Just uh, kind of collects some sun heat. The water goes through these pipes right here and then it gets warm enough. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Yeah. I like to come out here and garden naked and uh, get, I get sweaty. Work yeah. for the first couple hours in the morning and then grab a garden sense. shower and then head to the studio. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things in life don't make sense, but gardening naked, however, does. Yes. Man, we should go see if we can get us a strawberry. No, we're just like on a okay. nibbling tour. Yeah. <laughs> what else can we nibble on? Strawberries are the best. It's strawberry city. You got little blueberries here too, huh? Yeah, blueberries are bad. They're turning oh, because color. Because they're sour. Yeah. We can't eat those yet. 
Will ripe. we die? No, they're just so good when they're ripe. Just Every too tart. One. Every there's got to be one. Magical treasure. There's got to be one on here that I could eat. Oh man, I mean, you could try it. I bet it's like so tart. I've never tried it at this stage. And it's like a little hard. It's probably like chewing on a little rock. Oh gosh, look at this little guy. Definitely not uh, ready to be eaten yet, but I'm gonna try it. Oh wow, it reminds you of like eating an apple. Really? I mean, was it bad? Try no, it was great. It definitely reminds you of like biting into an apple. Like the texture. The texture plus the flavor, like a Granny Smith. Oh. You get that in your brain when you hang? Oh yeah. Jeremy. Well, that's interesting. Oh. Cool. I could see myself throwing that in a salad or something. Oh, wow, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. Making, you know, making a smoothie or something with it. Let's see if we can find us a strawberry. That's the real treat of the garden this year. Oh yeah, it's time for him, baby. Come on. Reveal yourself, strawberry. <laughs> Jeremy, help us find them. Ooh. Gosh, maybe Laura picked him. What a bummer. What a bummer. You got me so hyped up, man. I know, dude. Well, at least we we had some unripe blueberries. <laughs> Here's a really <laughs> unripe strawberry that oh, we can man. tackle. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just remember the asparagus. Don't come near my strawberries, chickens. <laughs> or else. That's its voice. Yeah. <laughs> Still maybe workshop that a little bit. We'll find a good voice for it. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it is a little bit more raspy yeah, like yeah. that. <coughs> Coughing. <laughs> it just got done smoking a pack of cigarettes. Hey! I like Get that. off my lawn! <laughs> no strawberries. Strawberry <laughs> shop's closed, punk. <laughs> <laughs> Try next year. <laughs> this place has to be good for your mental health. I mean, it is just like so peaceful back here. Yeah. And uh, I mean, a part of being a business owner is like very stressful, you know, high paced. There's a lot of moving parts and it's hard to escape sometimes, but it seems like you all have got a really good area here to be able to escape a little bit. We're very lucky for that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we like to uh, kind of just like, yeah, soak it all in. Yeah, it's it's a great way to start every day. And like I said, I try and you know work in the gardens in the morning, or after and after work. And then we do a daily walk in the woods. You know, I take the dog on the loop trail, yeah. and and uh, it's really great to have, um, yeah, bountiful nature to to be able to balance sort of like computer work or administrative stuff. Yeah, and yeah, like you said, the the hard stuff, yeah. business. Yeah, my. Uh... One of my favorite ways to start the morning is like when the tomatoes come in, like the cherry tomatoes, mm. go out with my cup of coffee and mm. just like pop the cherry tomatoes. Oh. Do you ever do that? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like such a great pairing. With the coffee? Yeah. No, I've never coffee. done it with that. No. Yeah. Try it together. It's like, okay. I, th I feel like they're companions. Oh. Because they taste so good together. Okay, cool. Like, because I you usually like, that. I'll like hit a cookie or something, you know, and like with coffee and get the... But you do it like that with a cherry tomato. It's good. Do you like pop the whole tomato? Oh yeah. Do you like chew it up and then drink some coffee uh, at the same time? Yeah, so pop it, chew the tomato, like get the juices all floating around in your mouth and yeah. then start sipping the coffee. Whoa. Yeah. It'll change your Man. whole experience. Am I gonna get like a tomato latte next time I go to Lincoln Road or what? <laughs> <laughs> we should start doing that, huh? <laughs> I mean, if it's good. <laughs> or maybe just serve it with your coffee. Could oh, you? baby. Oh. Yeah. That would be good. Could you imagine doing like uh cherry tomato? You know how you froth milk for a latte, you know? You yeah. put the tomato in there, like yeah. puree the tomato or something, throw that in there, oh. froth it up, put it on top. Oh man, would it be good? Maybe, I don't know. Oh. Maybe we should try that. Maybe. We should try that on Lincoln Road. We're gonna go to the creek now. At one time on the Appalachian Trail, my buddy and I, we were just gonna hang out in the creek for a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, we were like, oh, let's go hiking a little bit. We didn't put our shoes back on. Okay. So we hiked like two or three miles barefoot on the Appalachian Trail, and a lot of it was in the creek. It was hard, but it was like so cool. Cool. I hadn't really like walked around the woods much just barefoot, you know? 
Oh man, that's great. It's the best. I feel like I just need to come out here on vacation. Yeah, right, and just kind of mellow. Stay, stay a week. There you go. Oh, I see, I see what's going on down here. Yeah. I see what's going on here. Those are, those are from the previous t people that lived here. Breaking laws down here with the claws. That's not illegal. <laughs> <laughs> I bought that at the store. There ain't no laws <laughs> when you're drinking claws, is what they say. This is like, uh, this is the pottery wheel down here. It's like a kick wheel. Oh, sweet. Noah and I brought this down here years ago. So, and then he would, he used to work down here, Noah. He called it Rock Rib Studio. And I guess he would use these rocks as ribs. Like, <laughs> making pots down here. <laughs> I don't think I've really made pots down here though. Dude, this is so cool down here. It's great. Do you come down here quite a bit? Yeah, not as much as I should. We come down here for uh, tornado warnings. We were just down here last week, yeah, for a tornado warning. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, we meet our neighbor Mike down here and we listen to the weather, mellow radio, wind it up. Wow. And, uh, and the trees blow around. Are you sure you have some good beers down here? Beers and yeah, if it's a certain time of day, we'll make a little fire and make some hot dogs or something. What is that? Is that something you carve? That's clay. Yeah, it's something Noah did a hand. I used to, with that hand, I used to have a fishing pole up above. People would be hanging out here and I'd put that hand on the fishing, on the end of the pole and I would lower it. Oh my gosh. Down with people sitting around the fire. and I'd You want like, to talk about being freaked out. Touch their like head with it. <laughs> That is hilarious. Yeah. Order up. Whoa. Look at all those ferns. Pretty and really nice ferns. Yeah. The stories those ferns could tell. Oh, man. It'd be crazy. I almost slipped and fell, but I didn't. You have to leave a like on this video because I didn't fall. <laughs> and now my shoe's untied. <laughs> so I'm going to tie my shoe now. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 Whoa! <laughs> that's a damn slippery rock right there. Hey, uh, <laughs> I don't think there's any shoe that's uh, capable of tackling that rock. Maybe, uh, maybe ice skates. <laughs> <laughs> maybe ice skates. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of just want to spend all day in the woods, honestly. But you know, pretty good the pots stuff. can't be made down here. Right now. No, we'd need some clay. You, we should have brought our clay down here. That we probably should have. That would have been cool. Next time. Are you ready to teleport to the studio? I've always wanted to do that. All right, well, let's go. Ready? Okay. Oh, gosh. Oh. Hey, you whoa. Okay? Yeah. Yes. You are, yeah. <laughs> you look okay. Thanks. I feel okay. That was pretty exhilarating <laughs> in the realm of creation where hands meet clay a timeless dance unfolds step by step a masterpiece takes shape born from the intricate process of pottery making it all begins with the raw material the clay the potter's wheel a timeless tool stands as the catalyst for transformation as skilled hands apply gentle pressure the wheel spins, setting the stage for creation. A lump of clay is centered and secured, ready to be shaped into its destined form. The artist's vision starts to take hold. Fingers guide the clay upward, coaxing it into walls that rise and fall from graceful contours. The vessel begins to emerge, a testament to the potter's skill and artistic sensibility. Now it is time for refinement. Tools come into play, smoothing the surface, refining the details, and carving intricate patterns. Every stroke, every touch, adds depth and character, transforming the clay into a vessel of artistry. Once the form is complete, a delicate intermission is required. The vessel must rest, air drying to achieve a state of readiness for the next crucial step. Patience becomes the artist ally, as the vessel slowly takes on strength and stability. The journey continues within the fiery embrace of the kiln, 
The vessel, now transformed by the artist's touch, undergoes the alchemical process of firing. Intense heat envelopes the clay, forever altering its molecular structure. The vessel matures, its colors shifting and glazing transforming into vibrant hues. Inside the kiln, magic unfolds and the vessel emerges reborn. With meticulous care, he applies finishing touches, polishing and glazing and surface to perfection. And so, from a lump of clay to a work of art, the journey is complete. Each vessel holds within it the artist's vision, his passion, and countless hours of dedication. So, have you made a lot of pots before? Let me just tell you something. Okay. I've made zero pots in my life. Really? But I've always been intrigued by it. Oh. And that's why I'm here with you right now. Yeah. Well, we'll get you making pots. It's pretty easy. Okay. Well, you first know. I got to probably turn this backwards. That seems like a good idea. Yeah. Okay. You should pick it up pretty quick. It's not like it takes years to get it down or anything. <laughs> do you need a degree to do this? No, you don't. Not at all. Not with YouTube. You don't need a degree for anything anymore, do you? But friends, you should go to Berea College if you're interested in pots, okay? Definitely. Yeah. I usually just kind of get in here and, and uh, cut off a little clay here. Probably do about that much. Um, to get ready, I kind of just usually just kind of do Ball this little up. magic thing by turning a uh, square into... Oh my gosh, that feels great. So you're just trying to ball it? Yeah, without without getting any air in it. So so don't squeeze. So don't squeeze. Just kind of smack. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Bunch of musicians here. We could start a band. Like he's a ba he's a bass player. Really? We got the percussion. You're the singer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm gonna teach you is something that takes a very long time to learn <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much you're gonna have to just commit the next year to two okay uh, so I'm not gonna be able to learn this in 30 minutes right like I thought okay. no, no, no. Okay. we're gonna have to get you a camper okay. out here okay if you really want to learn it so I'm open to that okay cool cool yeah Let's get a little water. Okay. Here's some. Am I done with uh, with mine here? Yeah, you did a wonderful job. <laughs> yeah. Here, I'll just show you what to do real quick. Okay. And then you'll jump in and yeah. Perfect. First thing you gotta do is center it. Okay. Which is just super, super hard. But um, <laughs> um you get it on the wheel head there and then uh, put a little water on it. And then Kind of just have a couple of hands here. This kind of hand controls that sort of the top and the outside, and this one kind of controls the outside. But what I'm doing is gonna I'm gonna move the clay down and seal it to the wheel head, keep it nice and wet, and then I'm gonna bring it up into a cone shape. Whoa! And then I'll bring it back down. And then we're kind of centered. Whoa. And so that's really hard to do, but I do it like thousands and thousands and thousands of times. Yeah. That's the first stage is getting your piece centered. Then you're gonna wanna open it up. So you find the center and then you kind of go on a little exploratory mission here down through the center. You're establishing the base of your piece. So you kind of take it down to where you want it and then open it on up. I mean, I could just watch this all day. And then kind of set it up to start pulling. So once you got it centered and opened up, it's time to do the exciting part. And that's the first pull. Generally, I do about three pulls or three to five pulls, depending on what I'm making. And I'm kind of just getting it kind of even throughout. And now I'm going to come in and make a vase and establish like a foot there and so from start to finish shaping it how long does it typically take you i mean just, i'm sure it depends on what you're making but yeah and how detailed you want to be right yeah because i can like i could call this good and then just let the glaze be the most exciting part of it you know like just a real simple surface 
and let the glaze play on it. Now you're smoothing it out with that tool? Just kind of like, yeah, compressing the rim and smoothing it out. Or I could do, I mean, all kinds of stuff. I could get in here and like, just start adding textures. Start to do some swoopies. I like the swoopies. You like the swoopies? <laughs> I okay. can't wait for this. Where's your ball of clay? Uh, no, you sit it over there next okay. to the broken growler that I broke. <laughs> He's going to fire me very quickly. Oh, man, no. You got to break some growlers. Okay, you ready? Here it is. Okay. Whoa! Whoa, bam! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so just kind of slap her down in there. Like that? Yep, right in the middle there. <laughs> okay. And uh, just kind of start doing it. like. Uh, Turn the wheel on? Yeah. So oh, get gosh. Up, get kind of I'm, ner I'm nervous right Center now. Why am I nervous? Like, right okay. Here. And so the key is, is you need to be balanced inside of yourself. Let me find my center yeah. balance before you can balance. And so okay. Do you feel it? I'm feeling it. I feel good about okay. this. So now you want to like... Journey I'm going on here. You want to like give that gift of centering that you have in yourself to this clay. Okay. Right. And the clay is going to be like, hey, Ryan, we don't have to be centered. We can just like wiggle all over and you have to be like no actually i am this centered force and you are going to come to me and i'll just delicately yeah just let it do it sternly but delicately stern but delicate yeah stern but delicate yeah okay but no yeah okay mm -hmm. now now you're gonna want to just kind of like just kind of kind of like press it in it. there a little bit yeah you know what's hard is like figuring out your foot Okay, so you see how your hand's going in circles like that? Uh -huh. That was the clay being like, Ryan. And you got to be like, no. Nope. That's pretty good. Yeah. Let's take a look. So, Am I getting somewhere? Yeah, you're getting somewhere. Yeah. And so you got this like pretty good little wobble there. Oh. Might help, might help a little bit, you yeah. know. Let's take both hands. Okay. And kind of like come in and like. Push down. Kind of like squeeze in a little. Yeah, your center. That looks great, Ryan. Look at that. Can I work here? Sure. I mean, <laughs> you kind of have to, to to pay off the growler. That's true. <laughs> I feel so bad about that. You shouldn't. Yeah? Yeah. You got kind of a little... Little nub there? Little nub there. That's fine, though. Maybe try one. One hand. One hand? Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe a little more water if you run out of water the water is a key to this water is sure. everything with clay so i'm really opening yeah. it up here oops yeah there is you too go much water nah that looks good now do i have to smooth that middle part out yeah so just kind of like even it out a little bit and compress it down in it's crazy how quick the shape changes oh yeah like based on how you touch it yeah you know, I can smell that onion on you. You like that? Yeah, it's pretty nice. You like onion breath? I do. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> you really got the full turtle farm experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go. What, just one finger here. And yeah, kind of on this side right here. Okay. And then one on the outside. Okay. And, and should they be at the same level? Yeah. Okay. So now you're making a pretty nice little bowl here. Yeah, it looks like a bowl. Maybe we're we're making a bowl in this journey. Huh? And then it's not perfect. But I'd sometimes be, not being perfect is... I'd eat ice cream out of that. Yeah. Wouldn't I could you? see that. Yeah. So there's things that we can do here to fancy this up. Okay. Take this, and you'll spin the wheel a little bit, and you'll flip that thing around so the flat side's down. Like this. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of press it in there and give it a little foot. Everything needs a foot. Am I doing it? Yeah, keep going. A little bit more. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, foot. Yeah. Now you got a Complete. little foot. Look at that. Look at that. We got a foot on this thing. And it's got a great rim. Look at the way it undulates. It's really nice. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't use a lot of sound effects when I, when I do my texture work. I'm learning something from you. I can't not do it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you have to do something to smooth that part? No, no, I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Now the hard part is getting this thing off, I feel like. Well, we threw it on a bat, so we're like 
we're good to go. Oh, okay. Let's do the cutoff. Okay. And the key with that is getting it on both sides and uh, keeping Just it, keeping it, keeping it down on the on the wheel head there. There you go. Pull it straight through. It's harder than it looks. Yeah. Pretty soon you can buy this on TurtleFarmProductory.com <laughs> for one million dollars. <laughs> Set it right here. Sure. That was fun. That was pretty good. This story reminds us of the profound importance of our mental health. Through Turtle Farm's journey, we discover valuable lessons to guide our own lives. We learn that the symbiotic relationship between nature and our well-being is a wellspring of inspiration. We find that immersing ourselves in the tranquility of the natural world can rejuvenate our spirits, fuel our creativity, and provide respite from the demands of everyday life. Moreover, developing a tight-knit community surrounding us as entrepreneurs teaches us the power of support and empathy. By fostering connections, extending kindness, and building a network of understanding individuals, we can create an environment that nurtures our mental health, amplifies our creativity, and bolsters our resilience. As we embark on our journeys, let us carry the spirit of Turtle Farm Pottery within us. A reminder to prioritize our mental well-being, to seek solace in nature's embrace, and to foster communities that uplift and inspire. Let us remember that together, we can achieve anything by fostering a culture of support, compassion, and understanding. We create an ecosystem where the pursuit of mental well-being becomes a collective endeavor. Let us stand united, empowering one another to seek help, find inspiration in nature, and nurture a creative potential.